What's good, y'all? Elvis here, back again with another episode of Better Barbering. For the people that don't know, Better Barber is a series that started on YouTube where I share tips and tricks that made me a better barber that other people can use to make them better barbers and ideally better people. Today I'm making a video on what's in my barber box, also known as my mobile kit. This is the setup I use when I do house calls or I'm cutting away from the shop, anything outside of my most ideal cutting environment. Anywhere I cut that isn't the home or the shop, I take this kit with me. So I'm gonna do a run through of all the stuff in my kit, how and why I use them, and then I'll talk about my recommendations for other barbers. All right, so let's crack this open and get into it. <gasps> all right, so first things first, let's get into my actual barber case. This is a, a duffel bag I carry all my products and stuff in. Anything that doesn't fit into this case. Let me show you. This was my, my old barber case. And it had a space for everything I needed. Everything I needed in it, all the clippers I needed, as well as the products. But this got too big and luggy to carry around, so I wanted something a little more compact. This case carries all the clippers that I don't use currently in my rotation on my backup stuff. So this is really just storage now. But this case, it's a Vincent Barber case. I got it off Amazon. Uh, more than likely, I'll have links and stuff in the description for you if y'all if y'all are interested. But I really like this case. Super compact, high quality. All right, so when you open up the case, you got a good amount of uh, storage over here. But the only problem is, is that because this is so sleek and it had, comes in with this little insert, it doesn't leave that much room to put stuff in here. So if you put stuff in here, it might be a tight fit, especially if you keep this. But I think this, uh, this little insert is fantastic. Down here we got one of my main clippers, my main arsenal. Here I keep all my miscellaneous stuff that isn't like my main clipper tools. But as far as the main clippers I take with me, I gotta keep a pair of cordless masters, cordless masters on me, and gotta keep a pair of uh, Babyliss FX on me. I mean, I keep those mainly because they're my favorite adjustable clippers. But uh, of course I carry some guards on me. I usually carry like anything from a one or a, a half guard into like maybe a one and a half. So I usually carry like one set of guards in my case for either my Babyliss FX's or my Cordless Masters because I really don't need two sets of guards for the same lengths. I only carry my Babyliss guards, but you know, wall guards, I'll work with them too. Just because this is the only clipper I like to use with guards really. My Masters, I can use guards, I do have guards, but I like to actually use my masters to blend without guards that's uh, either skipping like the half guard or doing a lot of clipper over comb. I think uh, the coilless masters are ideal for that. But I also have my Andis Trooper ZR2s and these are workhorses. These are the MVP of my entire team, no exaggeration. Instead of guard, you got a bunch of interchangeable blades at set lengths that you just put on and switch and whatnot. The benefit of detachable blade clippers is that they zip through hair. The thickest hair that you got, even if it's sheep wool, it will work through it way better, way stronger than adjustable clippers. With way less passes, it will save you a ridiculous amount of time as far as just cutting down bulk. I think everybody should get a pair and understand how to use them. But in my kit here, I have all my blades with me. That goes from the, the four out blade, a three aught, zero A, one, one A, one and a half, and two. Blades above those, honestly, I don't think I really need them. Just like how I don't really need a guard over a two because anything I'm going longer than that, you can just do clipper over comb, no problem. All right, um, but also in here I got like eyebrows, scissors. Like I haven't used those in years. I got this is like eyeliner. Oh shoot, this is eyeliner as well. So now let's get into the insert. I like this insert because you know it, it fits really well in here but then also you can put it to the side. And here I carry like, of course, a, a charger because you got to keep a charger on you when you got uh, cordless clippers because you don't want to get caught lacking. I forgot, my I got a pair of trimmers. These are my Andis Slimline Pro LIs. These are my, my go-to for most things just because I really like how light they are and they also fit in this case. I got other trimmers out of my go-tos, but I don't carry them in my barber case because they don't fit. And that's a real important detail to to think about when you're putting this case together because it's all about efficiency and what do I need to do the job. With this, the size of this case, I was challenged with the question of 
understanding what specifically I need to do my job, not just bringing everything just in case because that is not efficient. Speaking of not being efficient, this is a pair of my Babyliss Pro FX trimmers. And these are, I love these so much, but I can't use them in this case because just the way the blade is set up and like the clipper set up, it's, it won't fit in my case. And that's why I, I stick with my sim lines and I just throw them in here because you know, I can actually, well, I just did it, but I, I can close my case. So. However I did that, I, I just know it can be done. You saw me open it. Got some clips. I'd say have more clips than these, but this was just me throwing stuff in the case just, so it's just to show y'all. But you know, just so you can handle anybody with long hair or hair that hangs over, because you don't want to be having to hold that up with your hands or you don't want to accidentally be naked with the clippers. Super important, combs. I only threw a few combs in here just to demonstrate because I don't, I didn't need, that wasn't going to do a cut. I didn't need that many combs. But you gotta keep combs on you, and ideally in something something sanitary, just so you don't have to worry about cross contamination and clean all your implements before you put them in your case. You don't want to pull up to a place and then have to use a dirty comb on somebody. You have to wash it real quick. That's just not a good look. Here I got my Black Widow straight razor and uh, razor blades. Gotta keep those on me. Here, oh here, I actually have a, a two guard. So I don't carry above a two, but I will carry a two on occasion. Here I got some brushes, and uh, a lot of people like using these for blending. I think, debatably, their their like combs are better for that. But with anybody with, let's say, a taper in front or something where I have to separate hair from a parting or something, or from the top, I like to use a brush just because it grabs the hair differently than a comb. But then also, of course, you want a clipper brush specifically to brush it off your clippers. But I, I don't have one in here now, but I mean, in a pinch, I can use one of these, but then, but once you start to use these to dust off your clippers, you cannot use them on your clients no more. This is a clipper brush once it becomes a clipper brush. No going back. People don't pay too much attention to it, but it is super unsanitary. It's not a great look. Got my shears in here. A little pair of blended shears or thinny shears, regular six inch shear. Great for getting details. All right, now we're done with my main kit as far as all the tools. Now we're getting into all the extra stuff I carry with me. I put most of my stuff in this little shower caddy just so I can take it in and out of my kit. The whole purpose of this kit was being able to just pick my stuff up and go. Before, you know, I had everything in this case when I was in barber school, it was all fine and dandy. But at a certain point, I was using half the stuff I had. So I had to decide to downsize my kit just to be more efficient moving place to place with what I actually need. There's not a whole bunch of stuff in here. I have to have two complete setups. One for mobiles, one for cutting at the shop or wherever my regular spot is. When I do that and when I have two setups, like I have a thing of neck strips for, for mobiles and I got one for the shop so I don't have to transport one back and forth and then lose one or forget it one time and now I gotta make a bunch of stuff work. I cut it, all that stuff out. Here's like, I think this might be like shears or something. Yeah, this is like shears in a in an old razor. This is just like backup stuff. The other one in my kit is my go-to, so I, you know, I like to take that everywhere. This, we got a, a neck duster with some uh, talc powder in it. I'm not really big on neck dusters anymore. This was back when I was, you know, dusting necks. So now we, at the shop, we got an air hose and uh, I use a microfiber towels to dust hair off people. It's way easier to just throw in the, the washer and dryer so I don't actually have to clean stuff. But the cool thing with these brushes is that if you put talc powder in them, they tend not to get as dirty because the talc powder makes it hard for the hair and particles to stick. So they just, for the most part, flick right out. But if you don't put talc powder, the dirt on here cakes super, super easily. The dirt, the sweat, all that stuff. Carry a neck duster just in case, you know, I might need one. There is practical use in it. It's not my preferred method to dust people off, but then also it's not the most sanitary option. But before I got an air hose, I had this little blower. Well, I love this. I believe it's called like a hurricane blower. Some of the, the shit got rubbed off. This is, this is really old, but this is one of my favorite gadgets. It just, it blows really, really well, but also blows really loud because it's adjustable. So like, when I hold it lightly, it goes lightly, but when I press it more, it, it gets a lot louder. It blows a lot harder, but it's not super quiet. That's the only issue. But I love this, but I just don't have much of a practical use for it anymore, especially because air hose is a lot more efficient and not as loud. Uh, I keep some, some hairspray, some hairspray just to lay some hairs down. Here I got cotton swabs and nick powder just in case anybody gets any cuts. If you are going to be cutting people's hair and using a razor, there is a chance you are going to nick people. Honestly, I don't think you should use a razor if you don't have nick powder, just in case. Here we got a little sharps container. 
which I, I basically just put all my used razor blades in because you know it's a good look and it's nice and sanitary. Sanitary way of disposing blades. Here I got another backup uh, straight razor. It's like a, it's cool. It has a little ring on it. There's, there's gonna be a lot of tools that you get that that are just gonna be in reserve because you don't have that much practical use for them. But this, this is a must, bro. This is dope. Here I got myself a little headlamp because lighting on house calls is garbage. If you are doing a mobile cut, more than likely the lighting is going to be garbage. So most of the time it's on you to bring your own light. You know, I got multiple ring lights. I got a small one and I got a bigger one and I can just take it with me, but I don't like having to transport that. And I just like having to have a lamp on my head everywhere that I look, I have light. And I don't have to hold anything with my hands. I don't have to set anything up. I don't have to plug anything in. But the only thing is that, you know, I gotta make sure this is charged, but if this is not charged and it starts going out in the middle of the haircut, now I'm racing against the clock. So ideally, let's not deal with that. I ain't talk about it, but you gotta have a cape. How you gonna cut hair without a cape? But y'all y'all already knew that. So I keep forgetting essentials, but you already know, you gotta have a mirror. How else is your client gonna see the haircut? I mean, you can see off your phone, but get you a nice little quality mirror that you can fit in your case. I don't know how I keep forgetting important shit. Cool care, you gotta have cool care or whatever brand clipper spray. So coolant disinfectant, lubricant, cleaner, rush preventative, keep your clippers in good working order, but of course you gotta oil them and stuff too. And also, I forgot about alcohol and like astringents and stuff like that. The astringent I like to use is either Seabreeze or Witch Hazel. You know, they're not as strong as straight alcohol. I don't have it with me right now, but I also do keep a little bottle of alcohol but I use it to wipe away any oil or uh, debris from like the hairline area. It's just to prep it before I start lining it up and stuff. And then also I use that just for like cleaning a few things. Those are a must, but I gotta keep it 100 with y'all. Most of the stuff I have in my kit is unnecessary. You don't need all the stuff that I have to do a good mobile haircut. All you need is a good pair of clippers, a good pair of trimmers. And if they're, you know, if they're corded, you don't, you just need someone to plug them up. You don't need chargers. But you know, if they, you do need chargers, make sure they charge. As long as you have all your sanitation stuff on point. Like, oh, uh, carry some hand sanitizer with you. You know, I usually carry it with me mobily, so I don't have it in this kit. But you always wanna have hand sanitizer on you. If you can't wash your hands, ideally wash your hands is better. You wanna make sure you have the, the cape, neck strip, clean combs, all that stuff. I would say, you know, have a way to dispose in blades because or just, I guess you could throw it in like a old unused water bottle or whatever, but, but after that, dispose of them properly because loose razor blades in the garbage is not safe for anybody. I think the most significant advice I can give to anybody trying to establish their own mobile setup is to not add stuff on for the sake of adding stuff on. Most of the stuff in my mobile setup are pieces that I strategically added over a long period of time so I could optimize it in very specific ways. I got detachable blade clippers so I could cut faster and be more efficient with my time. I got more than one adjustable clipper to do more than one thing specifically. My masters, I don't like using my masters to, to blend with guards. And it's, it just tends to be better with clipper over comb. Since, since I gave every clipper a job, it does that job the best it can. And while you only need, you only really need one clipper that can do a bunch of stuff, but when you get to a certain level, you're gonna understand each tool more specifically and understand how it fits into your process better. I specifically like using my masters to, to blend and skip guards, but it's a lot harder to do that same exact technique with other clippers. So that's why my masters are in the spot that they're in. But if you have more than one clipper that you're using for a, spe a special purpose, it takes stress off the other clippers that you have. At the shop, I have maybe like, I don't know, maybe like three, four clippers that I actually use regularly. And every one of the clippers, except for my, I have like a pair of corded masters, is cordless. But I rarely, rarely, rarely have to charge the rest of my tools often because they're only on for a short period of time to do a very specific job. So I'm maintaining the quality of my tools, of course, you know, because, you know, this plant's obsolescence where things aren't built to last forever. You know, they're built to have expiration date, but I'm extending that expiration date because on a regular basis, I'm using them less. Also, you want to make sure that, that you're deep cleaning your clippers and uh, oiling because not oiling your clippers is the number one way to shorten the lifespan of your clippers. All right, appreciate y'all watching. That was my video on my mobile setup. If y'all got any value, please go ahead and like, subscribe. If you have any questions about my mobile setup or maybe questions about setting up your setup, comment those down below. Let me know. Me or somebody that just reads your comment probably got an answer for you. But until next time, crowd over clout, I'm out.